Hello, welcome back to my channel and part six of my Val Luton retrospective. And today I'm talking about The Leopard Man. Now this was the third of the collaborations between Val Luton and Jack Tourneur. It's probably the least liked and least well known of the three, with some reason. It's not got the power of Cat People or, or I Walked With a Zombie, but it's a really interesting and effective little thriller in its own right. When I first saw this film, way back when I was a teenager, it took me by surprise. And that is because it's a very cold, very cruel film. And actually, it's a film that's really about the town it's set in. It's set in this town in New Mexico, often filmed at night. It's very noirish. And it feels a bit like Orson Welles' Touch of Evil, do you remember? Where Vargas, the, you know, the corrupt police chief, is in charge. It's got that kind of feel about it. And like Touch of Evil, it's really about the culture of this town. The horror scenes in it sort of reinforce what's going on in the town rather than the other way round, really. It's a very cool, cold film about this town where there's lots of inequalities between rich and poor. And everyone is kind of on the make and everyone has got kind of petty little jealousies or anger towards others. So that there's a girl who's selling cigarettes, you know, and she's really craving being the star of the cabaret show. And she says to the star of the cabaret show, you know, if it wasn't just for a bit of luck, I'd be in a different position and I'd be the star and you wouldn't be. Then two of the girls who are the leading cabaret stars, right from the beginning, they're at odds with each other. There's this brilliant opening sequence. Tourneur directs this film superbly, right? So what happens is you've got a bit, a bit of castanets on the musical soundtrack. Then, then the castanets goes into the, the diegetic soundtrack. You can hear castanets, and you're looking through an open doorway at night. Then you see the figure of this kind of flamenco dancer with her castanets. And then you see the camera moves and cuts. It sort of pans across, sorry. And you see the girl in the opposite dressing room, who's the other main character of the film, banging on the door saying, oh, shut up with your castanets. The camera moves up to that doorway, and the door slams in our face. It's just a brilliant way of starting a movie. But it also, it just shows Tourneur's intelligence as a director. Not only is it a really interesting way of coming into the film, but it sets the whole theme of the film. The arbitrariness of fate. You know, we've got these two women together who are sort of in conflict with each other. And just, we look like we're going to concentrate on one and the camera whips to the other. That's the whole nature of the film. Later in the film, Clo Clo, who is the sort of flamenco dancer, she's walking down a street and this hand appears. Just, you know, we don't even see who the person is. This sort of strange voice in the dark says, pick a card. And she picks a card and it's the ace of spades, the card of death. And so we think, oh, she's going to get killed. right? But then she walks on down the street and she speaks to a little girl hanging out a window. And then... The camera and the script follows that girl. Just like Tourneur's camera just panned across. We didn't know who the central figure of the scene was. Now, we, we go off on a different tangent. And this happens all the way through the film. The arbitrariness of fate. You know, you know, but for the grace of God go I sort of thing. It's a very cruel film. And this film, this horror film, its central image is not really a horror image. It's a ball, like a little ping pong ball balancing on a jet of water in a fountain. It keeps going back to this image. And one of the characters says, look, that ball, it's being held there by forces it doesn't really understand. And we're the same. And the whole film is a very cruel, difficult look at this town, the inequalities of the rich and the poor. It watches us in this very rich middle-class family. The servants come upstairs, they buy some flowers from the market, but they give them away to whoever they like. And then one of the butlers, he grabs one of the flowers before they go into the room, and then he presents it as if he's bought it himself. All the time we're looking at these, the sort of, the gritty realism behind all the smiles and all the, the sort of politeness of society. It's a very cruel, very cynical film. And all the time these people are being moved by forces which are really beyond their control, whether it's money, whether it's social status, or whether, as we'll see with the eventual killer, you know, he's being moved by, you know, forces, demons with inside him. 
the, the story is very simple. What happens is there's these two warring women who are both doing acts at the cabaret club. And one of them, Kiki, her manager says, look, I've got an idea. Come on. And I've got this little leopard, this little, like a panther. And, it, you know, it'll be a really, you know, sexy, brilliant way of introducing your act. And she comes on, and, and of course, it takes all the audience attention away from Clo Clo, the flamenco dancer. So Clo Clo, again, operating by forces, you know, beyond her control, jealousy, goes up to the panther and goes, kick, 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 with her maracas or whatever. And the panther runs off and it escapes into the town. Cue panic. Where is the panther? And this, this, the escape of this panther is going to be the horror that, you know, will generate the whole plot. And we have three extraordinary horror sequences throughout this film. They're really the, the whole, they're sort of tent poles of the whole film. And they're brilliantly directed by Tourneau. And in each one, Tourneau shows his savvy as a director. So in the first one, the, the panther has gone missing and everyone's searching for it. And this young girl has to go and buy some groceries for her mother. And she goes out in the dark. And it's beautiful scene setting, and you, you find out a lot about the social status of the girl, like the local uh, supermarket has shut up shop for the night, so she has to go across the river, the dry riverbed, to the big store on the other side, and she has to go underneath this very dark bridge. It's a beautifully evocative sequence, with two great buses, you know, two great shock sequences. I actually jumped out, I've seen the film before, but I jumped out of my skin when the, uh, the tumbleweed comes through the bridge. If you've seen the film, you know the bit I mean. And then when she's going back under the bridge, the, the train goes loudly across and brilliant lighting, noir lighting. And then she gets back to the house and she's banging furiously on the door because the panther is behind her. And all you see coming under the bottom of the door is a pool of blood. Even today, an extraordinarily evocative sequence. Tourneur just using one image, one physical image, to get across the idea. In the second killing, this woman has trapped herself in a cemetery and she looks up and across the wall of the cemetery she sees uh, a full moon and then slowly the branch of the tree above her just lowers. You don't see the panther, you don't see anything, the branch of the tree just lowers and then she screams and the branch whips back. All done just through one piece of physical prop and image. And then the final one is very unusual what Tourneur does here. Clo Clo is finally going to get her, her death in the streets of the town. And she's standing in the shadows. Something or someone comes up to her. She throws her cigarette stub into the dirt road. And the whole rest of the sequence is just shadows of a woman resisting attack over this cigarette stub. It's brilliant direction. But there's something odd about these sequences. They rhyme. Look out for this. It's kind of curious. All three sequences are to do with mothers and daughters. So in the first sequence, a mother sends her daughter out in the dark to get some food and says, stop complaining, go and do your duty. And then ends up, in a way, killing her own daughter because she won't open the door to her. In the second sequence, the mother of this rich girl says, look, don't go and meet this guy in the cemetery. Meet men properly and have them introduced to your parents. You know, be, be you know, good, good morals. So again, the girl follows her own flight of fancy and gets killed. In the third sequence, watch out, there's a small entrance, like one line from the mother of Clo Clo who comes down and says, oh, don't go out again, you know, you're tired. Just leave it. Forget that money that you're going to go out to collect. And she gets killed. And look out for the fact that the grove in the cemetery where the young Consuela, the rich girl, sits when she's waiting for her boyfriend, in it is a huge statue of a mother and child. Very interesting. It's a very curious sub-theme running through the film. By the way, that statue in the grove looks very like the statue in Isle of the Dead. So it's a very cruel film. I mean, that first sequence where the girl gets killed is the cruelest sequence in all of the Val Luton films. And probably the cruelest sequence, one of the cruelest in any horror cinema. It's very un -Tornerian. It's not like Jacques Tourneur. Jacques Tourneur's universe is often more shades of grey rather than stark white or black. 
it's, it's a universe that believes in the supernatural. It believes in people. You don't usually get this kind of cynicism in Jack Tourneur. On the other hand, there is Tourneur's typical empathy with the poor and the downtrodden. And just as in I Walked With a Zombie, where there was a great deal of empathy with the inhabitants of the island, you know, and what they went through in, in the old days with slavery, that appears again here. This is a New Mexico town where in the old days there was a, me uh, a massacre of Native Americans. And each year they have a, 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 a ceremony to commemorate, you know, the Christian monks going to apologise for this. So again, we've got this, this community that's kind of living in a sort of old history of death. You know, this, this got, it's got this kind of curse on it. You know, and there's huge empathy shown for these Hispanic, you know, Native American peoples in this town. So it's a film that has this kind of curious tension. It's it's very, very un Jack Tourneur. And at the same time, it's very Jack Tourneur. It, it, and that tension is kind of quite interesting in the film. The characters in the film are quite unusual. As we've seen in the other Val Luton films, we have a young American couple. But in this film, rather than representing the future, they're actually disruptive. They're harmful. It's because the man wants to promote his star. He brings in this panther, which is a stupid idea. The panther gets free and it kills this young girl. Then it opens up the mind of this other man in the town who's a killer and he starts killing. And then right at the end, when the young American guy says, well, if he and his girlfriend finally develop a consciousness and finally realise that they ha have got to feed back into the community, which they've partly destroyed. Even then, they're a cause for disruption because a young lad who they take with them to expose the killer ends up moved by forces he can't control, shooting the man, and he gets stuck in prison. So this, this young American couple, the usual couple in Val Luton films who inherit the future, are actually the least sympathetic people in the entire movie. You're kind of more sympathetic to the killer himself. Well, very well played by James Bell. He's the best actor in the film. You know, who's driven by impulses he can't control. Also interesting to note that he also lives in a world of death. He's decided to sort of immolate himself, almost literally, in a museum, a museum of the past. Uh, that's kind of an interesting thing. Also... There's also an interesting thing with the women in the film. So Clo Clo, the flamenco dancer, Kiki, who is the uh, main cabaret star, and the gypsy card reader, tarot card reader, um, represent kind of like the three fates. You know, in Greek mythology, the fates were the people who decided what happened to people in their destiny. And in a sense, they're almost like sort of modern avatars of that. They decide the destiny of the people around them. It's a very curious kind of effect that runs throughout the whole film. So it's a film that moves between poetry and cynicism. So one minute you can have this portrait of a woman with her head, she's veiled, and she looks like a kind of, you know, Mother Teresa type figure, or, you know, the Virgin Mary. And then slowly she'll raise a cigarette and have a puff of the cigarette. It's a film that moves between those two poles. And the result is a very effective thriller. Not a particularly great horror film, not a very complex film, but it has subtle undertones that are really, really interesting. Um, and I hope you discover them for yourselves. Thank you very much.